Hello, hello, internets. We are back with one of the relatively early steps of tooling and stamping leather. So what I've already done is done a rough cutout of the piece that I'm going to be using and cased it, which involves soaking it in water and then uh, just letting it sit so that the water can permeate all the way to the core of the leather. And this bad boy is ready to go. This is a pair of Wonder Woman tiaras um, that are kind of facing back to back there. You'll see how they turn out in a bit. And I am going to be first using my pattern piece to trace the design on there. So, if you're new to tooling, you may want <laughs> to move the cat. Um, if you're new to tooling, you may want to tape down the pattern piece before you start tracing, because if it shifts in the middle, you're going to be in a world of hurt trying to line it up again. But if you've got some experience, then you can just hold it in place for the process of tracing it. And this is quite a small piece, so it's not hard to hold it in position for the whole time. It is small, but because it goes right on the forehead, like <laughs> right up close to where your eyeballs are. It is a focal point of the costume, which means you do have to be more careful with this than you do with any other piece of the costume. So very careful to get all of your lines right um, and to do all of your stamping nicely. So, doesn't matter what order you draw these lines in. You just have to make sure you remember which ones you've already done. And you can peek underneath the pattern, but that does mean you're liable to reset where the pattern is and have your lines not quite match up. This pattern piece is on its last legs. Every time you trace with a pattern piece, uh, it's going to get a little bit soggy because the leather has to be wet at this stage. And it makes the paper more likely to tear. Oh, if you are going to tape it down, taping it directly to the leather doesn't work. Like, uh, scotch tape absolutely does not stick to wet leather. You have to loop the tape all the way around and stick it to itself. But you would figure that out in pretty short order. I should probably retire this pattern piece and print off a new one. Hi, sweetheart. What you want? She has a mouse she wants me to throw. Keep her entertained for about 20 seconds. My cat knows how to play fetch, which is a mixed blessing, because it's so cute. Um, but it also means she's always bringing me things to throw. So, remember, this is a focal point, so be very careful with how you draw your lines. Particularly on the star because it's something that needs to be quite symmetrical looking, and there is nothing to guarantee its symmetry except you being careful. Back. She is back. And the mouse is all of a sudden wet. She does this too. If there is something bowl-shaped nearby, she'll drop it into the bowl, and this can be shoes. Um, this is frequently water dishes. She will dunk the mouse in the water. I don't know if she's trying to drown it or what. Um, before she brings it back, and sometimes she just forgets about it in the water dish, and it gets utterly sodden and very gross. But the grossest thing she's done is to drop it in the water dish so it's all wet, and then drop it in the litter box, and we've got that clumping cat litter that just clings to the wet mouse, and then she tries to bring it back, and I'm like, no kitten, we're done. You ruined it. Game over. Mouse is going straight in the trash. There is no saving it from that. Sometimes if a line curves badly, you can straighten it out a little bit with the stamping because the tool that you use is relatively long, so it's good at making straight lines. I used to do my cut lines for these uh, very deep, basically as deep as I could make them because I do like the depth that's afforded by being able to tool in such deep, such thick leather. 
But then when I put up some of my stuff in a leatherworking forum for the old timers to critique, one of the things they dinged me on was bevel, beveled lines that didn't go all the way to the bottom of my cut lines because the leather just didn't want to compress that much, even though I'd cut deeper. And they said, they were like, oh, that, that looks really unprofessional. And once I pointed it out, I knew exactly what they were talking about. And I was like, oh, yeah, now that you mention it, it kind of does. So I've been making an active effort to not make my cut lines quite so deep so that when I bevel, it reaches all the way to the bottom of those. Okay. Oh, this line. You'll often find when you go to start tooling that there are some trace lines that you neglected to cut with the swivel knife. So it's a good idea to keep the swivel knife on hand for those. But I think that's it. And it is ready for stamping, but it's too late to stamp tonight. So I will just put this back in the bag. I don't want it to dry out. I want it to stay at this level of casing. Um, and putting it back in the bag will halt the drying process. So it'll be exactly like this when I pull it out tomorrow to hammer on it.